Welcome to BrainWorks Life Science Genesis Biology Tutorials for all level students with me, your tutor, Mike Sikatema. Today, we focus on the cell theory. At the end of this lecture, students should be able to briefly appreciate the history of the microscope and the cell, define a theory in science and know what the cell theory states, know the basic structure of a cell, explain the structure and function of the cell organelles found in animal cells and plant cells. Let's move along with our objectives and look at the history. To start off with, we're going to talk about a scientist known as Robert Hooke, 17th century man, who was regarded as a polymath. This is someone who's good at multiple disciplines. Hooke was particularly good at natural sciences, architecture, and philosophy. But his most notable discovery was in 1665 when he examined a, an oak tree that you can see on your right. What he did is he got thin, narrow pieces of this oak tree and examined them under a primitive microscope as seen in the center. He observed tiny box-like inclusions, which he called cells. He later published his discoveries in a publication known as Micrographia. You can look it up on the internet at your own time. We now talk about Anton van Leeuwenhoek. He's actually one of my favorite scientists. Is the exact definition of you do not need a certificate or wealth to become a scientist because he's actually from a poor background. You just need to have a curious mind. He developed a hobby of grinding fine lenses to make compound microscopes. He discovered the first protozoa and bacterial cells. He discovered human and animal spermatozoa and eggs, realizing their importance in reproduction. He observed various types of blood cells, including red blood cells and white blood cells, and called all these discoveries animalicules, which just means small animals. He's also regarded too as the founder of microbiology. We'll do more of microbiology in A-level biology lectures. We now focus on the cell theory. The word theory is used differently in science and daily vocabulary. A theory in science is defined as an explanation or answer that has been repeatedly tested and verified using the scientific method. It's another way of saying a theory is a proven fact. Thus, various scientists performed experiments and postulated the cell theory with states. Postulate number one. All organisms are made up of cells. This means uh, cell organization. Different cells clustering together to make tissues. Different tissues clustering together to make organs. Different organs coming together to make organ systems and eventually a multicellular organism. Postulate number two. A cell is the basic unit of structure and function. This means a cell contains the genetic information called DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, which codes for structural proteins and functional proteins such as enzymes to ensure homeostasis of its internal environment. Don't worry, we're going to talk about all these different sounding terms in future lectures. Postulate number three. All cells come from pre-existing cells. This means one cell will copy all of its information and divide to make two cells. Then two cells will divide to make four cells. Then four cells will divide to make eight cells and so forth. It's an exponential growth through a process known as cell division. Again, we're going to talk about the process of cell division in future lectures. Let's talk about the structure of a basic cell. For any cell to function, be it a plant cell or an animal cell, we need something known as protoplasm, which includes the cell membrane, 
the nucleus and cytoplasm. All cells have this in common. Uh, further terminology, I want you to differentiate between a eukaryotic cell and a prokaryotic cell. Eukaryotic cells include plant cells and animal cells because they have a true nucleus wrapped around a nuclear membrane or nuclear envelope. Prokaryotic cells, on the other hand, do not have a true nucleus. They have a nucleosome found in the cytoplasm without a nuclear envelope. We now talk about the detailed structure of an animal cell as seen under the electron microscope. To begin with, we're going to talk about the cell membrane. The cell membrane is made up of a double layer of lipids. It's selectively permeable in that it only allows certain substances to pass through in and out. Why? Because the cell membrane has a membrane potential. It's charged. So you can imagine, because of these charges, neutral molecules such as water, carbon dioxide, and oxygen can easily pass through the cell membrane. But charged substances, for example, iron, amino acids, and glucose cannot easily pass through the cell membrane. These substances pass through the cell membrane using special channels that we're going to talk about when we look at A-level biology. Let's look at the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is made up of two parts. The cytosol, which is just the liquid part of the cytoplasm, contains about 90% water. The other 10% is organelles suspended within the cytosol. So cytoplasm is equals to cytosol plus cell organelles. Let's now focus on the nucleus. As you can see, the nucleus also has a structure inside it known as the nucleolus. So the function of the nucleus is that it contains DNA, meaning deoxyribonucleic acid. DNA is, is um, the instructions of the cell. These are the instructions that tell the cell to make amino acids and proteins which can be structural proteins or functional proteins like enzymes. The nucleolus functions in that this is where ribosomes are made. But you might ask me a question, what are ribosomes? So ribosomes are organelles in which proteins are made. So this is where protein synthesis takes place. So the nucleus gives the cell instructions to make proteins, and these proteins are made in the ribosomes. So I want you to look at certain structures known as um, endoplasmic reticulum. I want you to notice that we have two types of endoplasmic reticulum. We have got rough endoplasmic reticulum and we have got smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum, excuse me, has no ribosomes on its surface. It functions mostly in making lipids and steroid hormones and detoxification of substances within the cell. The rough endoplasmic reticulum is rough because it has ribosomes attached to it. So after proteins are made, they have to be modified and packaged. This process is known as post-translational modification of proteins. This happens in the ribosomes. So after the proteins have been made, they have to be packaged into transport vesicles and transported out of the cell. I like to call this function ready for transport and it takes place in the Golgi apparatus. Let's now talk about a very famous organelle known as the mitochondria. So the mitochondria is known as the powerhouse of the cell because this is where cellular respiration takes place, where energy in the form of ATP is made. ATP being adenosine triphosphate. 
in a level of biology we're going to go into detail in this and talk about oxidative phosphorylation and the electron transport chain but for your for your level i just want you to know that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell and this is where cellular respiration takes place and energy in the form of atp adenosine triphosphate is made let's talk about small cellular inclusions known as lysosome these are membrane bound organelles which contain digestive enzymes they protect the cell from viral toxins bacterial toxins and they also break down excess or worn out cell parts note be it a plant cell or an animal cell vacuoles will be present the only difference is that the vacuole in a plant cell is bigger and more centrally located but it functions more or less the same it acts as a reservoir to store water uh, electrolytes and other nutrients hence keeping the ph of the cell stable also it also balances the hydrostatic pressure within the cell and outside the cell we're going to talk about the intracellular environment and the extracellular environment of the cell and to keep this hydrostatic balance the vacuole helps out in that way so these are the structures that i want you to know about the animal cell let's now talk about the detailed structure of a plant cell let's now look at the detailed structure of a plant cell all the structures I've talked about in the animal cell are also found in the plant cell. The only distinction is the cell wall and chloroplast. So we're just going to talk about these two structures. The cell wall is composed of polysaccharides known as cellulose. It can be tough, it can be flexible and sometimes rigid. It gives the plant cell a regular shape. There's something that I must say about the cell wall in that it is fully permeable, unlike the cell membrane, which is selectively permeable. So this structure allows everything to pass through it. It's fully permeable. However, it does protect the plant cell from dehydration. How does it do that? Through a process known as turgidity that we're going to talk about during... Uh, movement of substances across the cell wall and across the cell membrane i want you to observe a structure known as the chloroplasts chloroplasts are found only in plant cells why because plants make their own food these organelles carry out photosynthesis they capture light energy and convert and store it in a form of ATP, releasing oxygen as a byproduct. Think chloroplasts, uh, they are rather awesome organelles. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, share it with your friends, subscribe to our channel, and follow us on Brainworks Education on Facebook. For online tuitions, email me at bothelbiomed at gmail.com or call me on 0974 536 067. See you in the next video.